Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I am talking about Enigma versus Forge. And this was a one-shot run with the DC Adventures tabletop role-playing game, and also the Marvel Saga card-based tabletop role-playing game. Um, and my players were Norman and Reggie. Norman played Enigma, and Reggie played Forge. Now, if you're not familiar with Forge, there's good reason for that. Um, Forge is a fairly obscure X-Men character. He really has not been, well, the X-Men themselves have really been, there are, of course, issues because Marvel doesn't really own them, so if you're reading, you know, the X-Men titles, there's, you know, there's significant issues about the X-Men comics. But I, I read Forge when I was young, and I read X-Men when I was young, I still read X-Men, um, and, uh, and Forge is really special to me, and the reason why is I am Native American. So my mother, uh, so my grandmother actually lived on the Mattapanai Reservation uh, down south, and uh, so two generations ago, my, my family, and actually I still have family living on the Mattapanai uh, Native American Reservation. And Forge is a Native American superhero. So, uh, you know, so of course he's always really had a special place in my heart. And uh, Forge's power is he is, uh, he has a mutant ability that lets him um, uh, actually fix, build and repair machinery at a level that is hyperhuman. Okay, so he is the best mechanic on in any universe. So it's kind of unusual uh, skill skill set, you know, superpower. But I'm a huge fan of Forge, and I've always liked him. He also has cybernetic parts. He has like cybernetic arms and legs, and he's a pretty unusual guy. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let you know what happened in our uh, our Enigma versus Forge. Uh, one shot. I really had to sell Reggie on playing Forge, but he did a great job of learning his uh, his skill set and his superpowers, and he was ready to go. And Norman was very excited to play Enigma. Uh, Enigma, of course, is uh, um, the Riddler. So I'm sorry, uh, E Nigma, E Nigma, Edward Nigma, uh, the Riddler. So this is really the Riddler versus. Um, versus Forge, okay? All right, so uh, so at the beginning of our story, uh, what happened was uh, Edward Nigma, the Riddler, um, just, you know, he, he has recently taken his licks going up against Batman. Batman foiled one of his plans, which wasn't able to capture him. This was a few months back. Wasn't able to capture him, and he wasn't returned to Arkham. So, um, so... The Riddler begins thinking about his his next job, his next heist, right? And um, and one of his uh, henchmen is saying, you know, hey, you don't really do, you know, you have you have a high knowledge of technology, but you don't really leverage it, right? Well, the Riddler takes this to heart, and he actually starts uh, using his hacking skills in earnest. So he spends a few months just kind of sharpening his hacking skills, which have always been ex exceptionally high. And he pulls off, and uh, so he does two things very, very quickly. One, he actually goes about creating his next riddle, okay? Now, um, and we'll, we'll get to how he uses his riddle in a minute. And uh, and then he, he goes in and he actually hacks Cyborg. So the Riddler successfully hacks Cyborg. Cyborg is the most recent member to be inducted, major member, to be inducted into the Justice League, right? So, uh, and he was previously with the Teen Titans, but he was essentially graduated from the Teen Titans by Batman, by the Trinity, by Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and brought up to the big leagues, uh, and he is now a full, full-on Justice Leaguer, right? Well, the Riddler hacks him, okay? And this is a major problem, okay? Now, um, of, of course, so first thing Riddler does is he has been, uh, so one, he created this, ma you know, this massively complex riddle in order to, uh, that he is using as essentially 
the password on his hat on his hack lock of cyborg okay so um you know and so so he he's, so riddler has spent a lot of time and effort uh, pouring himself into this riddle, this saw, this riddle that he is using as essentially a password lock on his hack of Cyborg, and he also spent a lot of time getting his hacking skills up to hack Cyborg, and uh, and they actually be able to fully suppress Cyborg's, uh, you know, push Cyborg's uh, mental capacities, or actually his mental presence out, and now Riddler has full control of him, right, um, of his body. Okay, um, and, and his computing skill, and all his computing capacity, right? So at this point, um, but he actually didn't really think of anything to do with Cyborg. Well, that's not a problem, because uh, as soon as word starts getting around that the Riddler has hacked Cyborg among the, the criminal community, Cobblepot comes over immediately and goes, hey, no worries. And he drops, uh, he drops a cool three million down on Riddler to rent Cyborg for one day, okay? Now what he uses Cyborg for is he has Cyborg uh, actually go to the, um, the Gotham Zoo and using a, um, a new device created by Cobblepot, he turns all of the animals in the zoo to pure gold, okay? And he just leaves them there. And Cobblepot just leaves them there. That's all, that's all he wanted done. He doesn't steal the golden animals in the, the Gotham Zoo, um, and and he just, and he has Cyborg leave. Right, Cobblepot is one hundred percent happy with Cyborg's performance, and Cyborg had to you know fight off Gotham Police Bar Department and some minor superheroes to get this done. Right, so uh, at this point, Cobblepot is thoroughly thrilled with his one day rental of Cyborg. And he's talking about it within the criminal community. And Black Mask is like, bet, I'm in. And so Black Mask comes and uh, and he says, hey, you know, I got three million too. I want, I want the rental, re you know, I want, I want to rent Cyborg. Well, the Riddler never liked Black Mask. And so he doubles the price and makes Black Mask pay six million for one day of time for, um, for, to use, um, cyborg right so at that point black mask is is then uh actually takes uh him and he uses him specifically to rob um to rob a prototype out of star labs okay and he is completely you know it's not flashy and actually when it's done uh Black Mask does not tell anyone in the in the uh, criminal community what he stole, and in addition to that, Star Labs is so embarrassed and so worried by what they lost that they don't even report the loss of this prototype. Okay, so at this point, um, you know, the Robins all come together, and actually, of course, the Justice League has been working on this right now. Well, right now, the Justice League is in a very unusual state. So the Justice League is currently being led by Green Arrow. Now the reason that the Justice League is being led by Green Arrow is that um, one, Batman is um, Batman is uh, currently healing from having been struck uh, in a fight from the Hulk, and uh, with a left hand punch, the Hulk shattered 26 bones on Batman's left side and it was so severe his, his, his injuries were so severe that when they brought him to Alfred it, it, it wasn't going it wasn't doing anything Alfred immediately took him out of the bat out of the bat cave and actually started to have him um, recovering right and, uh, and actually brought him out of the bat cave excuse me uh, not recovering and brought him to uh, to actually Gotham's main uh, hospital and actually um, doctors from all over the world were shipped in and the problem was he was in so much pain uh, Batman was in so much pain that his heart and his mind were just becoming overloaded with pain and uh, the doctors got, got worried that he was gonna die just from sheer shock and so what they do did was they actually put him into an induced coma right now uh, now normally now the person who authorized this was Green Arrow and the reason why is 
Superman and Wonder Woman both went to aid Adam Strange on the planet of Ran. Okay, so Batman's in an, uh, Batman was in too much pain to make any kind of decisions, um, and uh, Superman and Wonder Woman are gone. So Green Ru Green Arrow is running the Justice League, right? Pretty significant change, right? So at that point, um, uh, of course, everyone really starts to get very, very worried about Cyborg being hacked because his criminal activity is ramping up. This is a serious, serious problem, right? So at that point, um, Tim Drake actually goes and uh, he gets all the Robins together. So he gets Nightwing and he gets Damien and he has himself right and uh, and the three of them begin uh, actually gets three three robins together and they begin immediately working on the problem okay and uh, and actually Tim Drake uh, you know uses them the best he can and they actually figure out the Riddler's riddle right so the Riddler's riddle was actually a changing cipher and so every time they would go in to enter the password, to uh, on the on the hack lock that Riddler had put on Cyborg, and one they uh, you know uh, so Riddler has Cyborg on the move. He's constantly moving through Gotham City, and um, and so uh, Robin uh, Night Robin Nightwing and uh, Robin Tim, Robin Damian and Nightwing all need to build essentially a drone network that has drones going out and searching for Cyborg. And then when they find him, um, they only have a, a minute or two before uh, Riddler detects that they've been found using using Cyborg's own, own uh, equipment. And so they only have one or two attempts to enter in a password to break the hack lock that, um, that Riddler has put on the Cyborg, right? Well, it takes them a week, a full week, just to figure out what Riddler's riddle is, right? And every time they go in, there's a different question, right? Well, they finally figure out that the riddle itself is a code, right? And that the riddle does have an answer, but uh, the the riddle, but the riddle's answer is the solution to Hodge's conjecture. Okay. Now, everything I've been talking about is fiction, but Hodge's conjecture is not fiction. Hodge's conjecture is a mathematical formula that has never been solved, okay? And, and, but get this, Riddler solved it. So Riddler solved Hodge's conjecture, and he now has the solution to Hodge's conjecture as the answer to these changing riddles that, that, um, uh, that Robin and, um, and Ro that Robin Tim and Robin Damien and Robin Nightwing have been working on, okay? And they just cannot figure it out. And so, at that point, um, Robin, uh, actually Nightwing goes and he talks to Zatanna. And Zatanna, uh, explains that, um, that, you know, um, Zatanna isn't sure what to do, and she asks, you know, uh, why don't you know why aren't they putting the back computer to to work, right? And the reason, and and uh, at that point, right, you know, Nightwing goes, oh well, you know, we really didn't feel it was appropriate to use the back computer because Batman's down, right? And she's, well, you need to fix that, right, immediately. And so at that point, Nightwing, uh, you know, circles back and goes to, to put the back computer to this question. And that's where I'm gonna wrap up for right now. And next time uh, we should have the conclusion to The Riddler versus Forge. Take care.